Hi, I'm Stephen with AlbertaUrbanGarden.ca. Rainwater collected on your property is thought to be one of the more sustainable ways to water your garden during the summer. That said, some of you have expressed concerns that this rainwater may in fact contain contaminants that may harm you or your garden. On this month's installment of the Testing Garden Assumptions series, we're going to take a look at rainwater to see if it's safe to use within the garden. Today's hypothesis is that rainwater is not harmful to use in the garden, but it also doesn't have any other added benefits other than a more sustainable water source. It is important to note that today's episode is only addressing rainwater collection for use in the garden and not as a drinking water source. The simplest method to test our hypothesis is to analyze samples from my rainwater collection system. The analysis will let us know if the rainwater I have collected has acquired any contaminants from coming in contact with building materials like asphalt shingles, aluminum troughs, or the plastic rain barrel. Another source of potential contaminants is the air the clouds and rain pass through on their way to the ground. In my area, recent news coverage has expressed concerns over air quality in my province. Depending on where you live and the materials used in your rain catchment system, these results may vary. Air pollution and building materials may result in contamination in the form of heavy metals, hydrocarbons and bacteria, and the addition of potential nutrients. In order to address our hypothesis today, I have submitted samples from my rain barrel to Maxim Analytics. The only withdrawal from the rain barrel prior to the sampling was for future testing garden assumptions experiments. The water for all tests was taken from the same reservoir, having no new water added during the sampling period. The water at the time of sampling had been collecting and sitting for a minimum of six weeks. As we've spoken about many times before, there are elements that are both essential and beneficial for plant growth. That said, if in high enough concentrations, even these elements can become toxic, such as phosphorus. There are also other elements that are simply not used by plants at all, and even in small concentrations can become toxic. These are generally referred to as heavy metals. The analysis provided by Maxim Analytics represents the total concentration of both available and unavailable elements. The results showed that there were no exceedances of any elements when compared to the most stringent environmental criteria. Now that we've established that my rainwater does not have any heavy metal contamination, let's take a look at hydrocarbons. Hydrocarbon contamination would likely come from when the rain comes in contact with the asphalt shingles. Hydrocarbons are predominantly made of carbon and hydrogen. They can be dangerous to human health as they are chemically active. Our lab results showed that there were no hits at all. In fact, all of the results were below the very sensitive detection limits of the equipment running the analysis. Now that we've established that there is no hydrocarbon and heavy metal contamination in my rainwater, let's take a look at bacteria. Bacteria are not necessarily a bad thing. In fact, in soil, there are a lot of very beneficial bacteria, some that are neutral, and there are a few that are in fact harmful if given the right situation. That said, I feel it's important for me to know if there is bacteria in my rainwater collection system as a baseline for a future episode evaluating the effectiveness of compost tea. Interestingly enough, the sample of rainwater we tested had well above the detection parameters of bacteria with over 12,000 colony forming units per milliliter of water. The application of rainwater that contains bacteria to the garden is not likely to have a positive or negative effect. First off, we don't know which bacteria are being applied, if they are beneficial, harmful, or neutral. The bacteria once added to the soil will likely die and will not be able to colonize as most healthy garden soil already have a strong and resilient resident population. Based on this information, I do not recommend using backyard rainwater collection systems like this for your potable or drinking water. These systems are just not safe enough to prevent the colonization of potentially harmful bacteria. There are many sources out there that cite rainwater as a potentially valuable source of drinking water. Now before installing any of these particular systems, I highly recommend that you do your research and contact your local environmental regulator to make sure it's safe for you and your family. With the limited harmful things that may be in our rainwater, next let's look at the nutrients that it may have collected. The results don't show a whole lot of nutrients being added to the rainwater, as most of them are below the detection limit. That said, there are trace amounts of organic nitrogen, chloride, calcium, and sulfur. This result is not very surprising given the high number of bacteria found within the samples. In order to run this analysis, 
the lab has to treat the sample with strong acid. None of the bacteria would survive this process, and they would all release their internal components into the water. Then, the machines running the analysis for the nutrients would pick up those internal components as the nutrients. The research that's out there generally supports the observation that rainwater collection systems built with newer building materials and in a rural setting are less likely to have contaminants in the water. Whereas older rainwater collection systems in an urban setting are more likely to have contaminants within the water. In conclusion, rainwater, based on today's evidence, is safe to use in the garden and has negligible benefits, aside from a more sustainable water source. I will continue to use water conservation techniques in collaboration with collected rainwater to make sure my garden is as sustainable as possible. If you have missed any of the Testing Garden Assumption series videos, such as if tap water is harmful to use in the garden, check out the playlist on screen now. Thank you very much for joining me today. I appreciate it very much, and I hope you have a fantastic day.